la 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 oh barney you're in a good mood today i am because i did really well on my writing assignment my teacher was so happy with me she let me take it down to the principal's office and show her oh that must have been really exciting. It was. I got to go down the halls with my friend, and we got to see the school secretary, and then knock on the door of the principal's office and, 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 and walk right inside. Oh, awesome. What was it like? It was awesome. She has a great big desk with a big painting behind it and a big window that faces the street, and a beautiful glass candy jar with yummy, yummy, yummy toffees inside. And I'll bet the candy jar was your favorite part. <gasps> oh, yes, because she offered me one. And that reminds me, isn't the word office in today's catechism lesson? It sure is. Lesson 27 says, what offices does Christ perform as our Redeemer? You mean Jesus has an office? Like my principal? Well, not exactly. You see, your principal has an office, which is a room set aside for doing her work at her desk. But an office can also mean a role or a job that one has. For example, your principal has an office, but she also holds the office of principal. Her role or job at your school is that of a principal. Like Justin Trudeau holds the office of Prime Minister of Canada? Correct. And Doug Ford holds the office or role of Premier of Ontario. Uh, and John Tory holds the office of Mayor of Toronto. Exactly. And I hold the office of King of the world! You do? Well, I wish I did. But back to the catechism. What offices does Christ have? Well, here's the answer. Christ, as our Redeemer, performs the offices of a prophet, of a priest, and of a king, both in his state of humiliation and exaltation. But what does all that mean? Well, Jesus Christ's offices are those of a prophet, a priest, and a king. Okay, but still, what does it mean? Well, let's take it up piece by piece. First, Christ is not Jesus' last name. Christ is one of his titles. It also means, or can be translated Messiah, and it means anointed one. Anointed? Well, yes. When, back in the Old Testament times, when someone was anointed, a prophet would pour oil on his head, and that meant that this person was set apart for a special purpose, such as being a king or a priest. Now, here's a picture of David being anointed by the prophet Samuel, and oil is being poured on his head, and he's being set apart to be the future king of Israel. Cool. But how does this apply to Jesus? Well, Jesus was anointed by God at his baptism with the Holy Spirit. He was being set apart for three special offices, a prophet, a priest, and a king. I think I got it. But what's a redeemer again? Well, a redeemer is someone who saves someone by buying them back. Remember the prophet Hosea's wife, Gomer, left him, but then she ran out of money and had to be sold into slavery, but Hosea redeemed her. He paid so that he could set her free from slavery and so that she could come back to him and her family. So Jesus bought us? Yes. You see, we were in bondage or slavery to sin. In John chapter 8, verse 34, 
Jesus says, truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. But what did Jesus buy us with? Money? Gold? Silver? None of the above. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19 say this. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life you inherited from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or spot. But when did Christ give us his blood? to pay for our sins when Jesus died on the cross. Whew, this is a lot to take in. So, um, okay, so I, I understand that Christ means anointed one and Redeemer means he bought us back from slavery to sin. But now I think I forgot what those three offices Jesus has are. Prophet, priest, and king. Prophet, priest, and and king. Okay, I think I got those memorized, prophet, priest, and king. But what's a prophet? Well, a prophet is a person who receives a message from God and tells it to the people. In the Old Testament, some examples of prophets were Moses, Samuel, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel. Does the Bible say that Jesus was a prophet? Oh, yes in a number of places, but here in Acts chapter 3, verse 22, Peter is speaking about Jesus and quoted the Old Testament and said, For Moses truly said to the fathers, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your brethren. Him you shall hear in all things, whatever he says to you. And when Peter was speaking about this prophet, he was referring to Jesus. Okay, so Jesus is a prophet. And he teaches us what God wants us to know. But what's the second office? Well, Christ is a priest. A priest? What's a priest? Well, a priest is someone who serves God on behalf of the people. He offers sacrifices to God to atone for the people's sins, and then he prays for the people. But what's a sacrifice? Well, long ago, before the Son of God came to the earth, in order for the people to come before God to worship and pray, they had to offer a sacrifice, an animal that would be placed on an altar and killed. The animal would die in the place of the human. Because the animal was punished in the human's place, the person could then be free to worship God and pray to him. Does the Bible say that Jesus Christ is a priest? Yes, in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 6, the writer says of Jesus Christ, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, we don't have time to talk about who Melchizedek is, but perhaps, Lord willing, in a future lesson, we can talk about that. Okay, so Jesus was a priest, and priests offer sacrifices but what kind of sacrifices did Jesus offer? Well, not sacrifices, but one sacrifice. One sacrifice that was, and that was when Jesus Christ offered himself as a sacrifice for sin when he died on the cross. You mean that Christ was the sacrifice as well as the priest? That's right. And uh, what's the third office that Christ performs? Well, Christ is the king. Oh, I know what a king is. A king is someone who rules over the country. He's the boss and he wears a crown. But where does the Bible say that Jesus is a king? Well, in a number of places, but we can, we can look at a couple here. Just if I can get this paper loose. There we are. Um, in John chapter 18, verse 37, when Jesus was on trial, the governor, Pontius Pilate, said to him, So, you are a king. And Jesus answered, You say correctly that I am a king. 
And when Jesus was born, um, the Magi came to, who followed the star, asked King Herod, where is he who has been born King of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and have come to worship him. Matthew chapter two, verse two. So Jesus is King of the Jews? Yes, but he is also known as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's king over all the kings of the world and in the heavens. But there were two other big words at the end. Well, yes, you're right. Christ is prophet, priest, and king in his humiliation and in his exaltation. But what is humi 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 humiliation? That's right, humiliation. But what on earth is humiliation? Well, to humiliate someone means to bring someone low, down, to humble him severely. But who would want to humiliate Jesus? Oh, a lot of people were jealous of him and wanted him dead. Oh, that's terrible. Yes, it was. But it was through his death on the cross that things were made right between God and his people. So Jesus was humiliated. Yes, he was. But what's that other word? Exaltation. Well, what's exaltation? Well, exaltation means to make great, to elevate, to magnify. So how was Christ exalted? Well, when he rose from the dead and ascended into heaven and sat at the right hand of God the Father. But does the Bible tell us this? Yes, it does. Now, this is a long passage, so listen carefully. I'm going to hold it up. And boys and girls, listen carefully. It says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has also highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those in earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So that those, those verses talk about how Christ was humiliated when he became a human being and then died that horrible death on the cross, but then how, G how God the Father exalted him by, because he was risen from, risen from the dead and then he was taken up into heaven and he's at God's right hand and someday every knee shall bow and every tongue in the universe shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Well, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? The Son of God, Jesus Christ, was humiliated and exalted. Jesus was and is a prophet, a priest, and a king. I've learned so much about Jesus that I didn't know before. Oh, and Barney, we've only scratched the surface. Lord willing, next time we meet, I'll go into some some more detail in learning about each of Christ's offices. And next week we plan to learn about Christ as a prophet. Then the week after we'll learn a little more detail of what it means that Christ is a priest. And then we'll learn about being a, him being a king and his humiliation and exaltation. You mean there's more to learn? Oh, yes. We'll never know everything about Jesus, even if we study all our lives. But the exciting thing is that we can keep learning and appreciating Jesus more and more each day. Wow. Well, I can't wait until next week's lesson. I can't either. But that's all for today, folks. Come back next week, and if the Lord wills, we will learn a little bit more about what it means that Jesus was a prophet. Take care, and God bless you.